so we'll see uh, here about uh, video laryngoscopy okay so we have a cmac and uh, the king's king vision and also a newer one the turin all right so we'll see a little bit about uh, video laryngoscopy before we go into the hands on part okay so uh, as you see uh, you know with a normal laryngoscopy the problem is one of the problem is in the alignment of an axis okay as you know our uh, the light usually doesn't bend right so it goes in a straight line so unless you keep everything in line you don't see the glottis okay so usually the structure which impedes us is the tongue so we try to move the tongue with the laryngoscope and the eyes go straight and sees the glottis for that everything else has to be aligned now this might not happen every time right so to overcome that we have a video laryngoscope because video laryngoscope usually has a, a camera tip a camera at its tip so that we can see it directly so the only next challenge is to intubate right to pass on the endotracheal tube now we have two types one is the video assisted direct laryngoscope and then indirect laryngoscope when we say as a direct laryngoscope the idea is it is we can do it both directly and also it can have a camera so we can intubate it so it is usually like our macintosh blade right the indirect one are the angulated one and the tunneled ones okay there we cannot do a uh, you know direct scopy under our vision sometimes what happens is in an ec airway video laryngoscope becomes more difficult uh, you have you come across a part where you do it with a video laryngoscope you find it difficult then you change over to a normal uh, laryngoscope everything looks fine okay so difficult ones are usually good with video laryngoscope the other ones are not now what a macintosh blade does is you can do both in the same sitting if you feel that that's not good you do a normal scope you can do it with the uh, cmac here you do a normal scope you can still put in a tube so that's one advantage of using a uh, direct one right we'll not go into the theory of you know what is there and all so as i said the advantages is it is better aligned a better uh, visualization in limited neck movements right and uh, when there is a limited mouth opening we'll come to it why okay the other one is it gives an opportunity for education i think most of you would have seen like you know you see how it is done what is a glot is like in the early part okay how is an intubation done you can actually teach them rather than uh, having uh, the mouth gives you a very narrow vision once you have a screen you see everything right even pathologies which are there in the uh, neck they can be seen better now uh, display to the other members of the team so when we do a laryngoscopy if i have to tell you what i see i usually say it as a cormac lehan okay i see a cormac lehan 2a i see a 3a then you know okay i need to give him a bougie but what if my assessment was wrong if it was actually a 3b or a 4 and i was saying a 3a because uh, you know i was so focused on it i am not sure what it is but when we have a image on the screen everyone else in the room knows what is to be done okay some okay you might think okay let me give an oelm uh, uh, external laryngeal memory becomes better you must have seen uh, have you all used video laryngoscopy uh, okay no problem okay so uh, uh, when you use it you will see sometimes when the vision is not good when you practice you will see your colleagues coming and you know placing it so when the last team was there when they were having difficulty without anybody saying the other member of the team started manipulating the so, so those are advantages because your team understands what is required okay then comes the uh, higher success rate especially in the difficult part more than saying especially in the difficult part okay so ec scopies uh, you know it is better to stick with our direct laryngoscopy for now okay because the learning curve even for a video laryngoscopy is around 50 to 70 uh, scopies okay so i don't think many of us get to do so much so you might think why is it so difficult it is difficult because it's a learning curve you do it 50 to 70 times video laryngoscopy also becomes uh, easy uh, for a laryngoscopy it is around 50 for a bag vent mag and mask ventilation it's around 10 so you can imagine like you know some it's e difficult to learn a video laryngoscopy compared to a normal scopy and lesser suspension pressure especially in coronary artery disease or when you don't want to give too much of pressure this becomes easier now the disadvantage is the depth perception right so uh, your hand is here okay your monitor is here then uh, you you have to manipulate it according to what you see somewhere else when you do a direct laryngoscopy everything is in one point so this depth perception and uh, becomes much more difficult with a uh, video laryngoscopy then uh, uh, you will find that improved view need not uh, translate into an in increased intubation success as i said the access is overcome but you need to still put in the endotracheal tube 
right so that might still be difficult with a video laryngoscope so uh, then this one we talked about then something called cognitive load okay so cognitive load means when you do a normal laryngoscopy uh, you see something here you listen to the monitor sounds you know if something goes wrong but uh, uh, having a video laryngoscopy is like looking at a mobile you are looking at something on a screen you are so focused and when something is on a screen we tend to be attracted to it we don't see anything else going wrong sometimes there can be tissue injuries here a bradycardia happening but we are focused something on the screen it's always more fascinating right rather than seeing something directly so this puts a cognitive load especially if you're a team leader imagine if your cognitive you know you're so focused on it that you forget everything else so many things can go wrong mostly the team leader is at the airway end is it not so you have to be very careful when you use a video laryngoscopy you shouldn't and longer intubation times when there is difficulty to intubate can also happen with a video laryngoscopy compared to a uh, direct laryngoscopy then fogging expensive and all those things okay this is another issue when you keep doing video laryngoscopy there is a possibility that you might lose your uh, direct laryngoscopy skill the example which i gave to the last batch was the ultrasound guided ijv cannulation now it, you know you hesitate before you go by a landmark technique to for an ijv though it has 97 to 98% success rate even without an ultrasound all right so when you keep doing something uh, you know which is more easier you forget the skill which is more basic right so these are just ideal parts so uh, one thing which i'll say before we go to the hands on is uh, there has a difficult airway predictor even for a video laryngoscopy that is presence of neck mass okay so when the anatomy is distorted whatever uh, even if you use a video laryngoscopy it might be still difficult so one uh, difficult airway predictor for video laryngoscopy is said to be the presence of a neck mass right so in those cases it's preferable to go with a fiber optic okay i think you have just come from that station so anything which can be combined with a video laryngoscopy to improve the success rate just like any a stillet bougies and even a fiber optic okay you do a, a in oral uh, fiber optic is difficult right so you combine it with a video laryngoscope then you can make it easier okay combination of techniques so there are three types macintosh which is your normal laryngoscope type then the angulated one is the uh, the the glide scope okay you will uh, you can see the i'll just put some uh, this is the glide scope angulated ones the angulated ones cannot be used for a direct scopy only a macintosh can be used then you have channeled ones the channeled ones are like this like the king's vision where you can actually pass it through the channel right so these are all the different types of uh, video laryngoscope lot of modifications and all have come like for example glide scope has come with a macintosh modification okay so those things have uh, come in so we'll jump straight into the uh, uh, intubation part yeah which one uh, the the macintosh type can be uh, used even as a direct scopy angulated ones cannot be used for direct scopy normal scopy also the macintosh type can be used as for the normal scopy also right no huh? yeah we have one uh, the cmac yeah the cmac is there right but this much names are there hmm. much varieties are there. so each has some advantages some some advantages some are just minimal modifications you can see uh, some are disposable okay so these are ch the channeled ones they have minor modifications with regards to the degree of view okay some uh, if you see this one doesn't have a uh, you know rotatable uh, uh, you know camera it cannot rotate so once you go in like this you cannot see what is happening unless you that one has Uh, one which is 360 degree rotated minor modifications are there and where the camera tip is located how much degree view is there whether they use uh, anti fogging in it or whether they don't use so these are all the modifications in these uh, types w one of the advantages is the size of the blade okay normally the laryngoscope blade is around 25 mm thick that's why we look at the mouth opening of at least two finger that's for to allow the laryngoscope blade to go in but with say mac um, uh, the c mac type d blade it is only 1 cm thick so even with a limited mouth opening you can still insert a d blade right so most of it like you know cmac here is around 14 mm thick the one which is there the 14 mm thick and uh, glide scope is around 16 mm and uh, the megrath is around 12 and air track is around 18 mm so they they all have a different 
uh, size of the things. So this, I think, will be broader, right? It's around 18, 18. This is around 18 mm uh, thick. So these are all the available uh, ones. This is pretty uh, thin. The one, the Turin one, less than one centimeter. It's only 0.8 or so. So it, it allows so much of uh, the, the the maximum width. The maximum width which goes in. Okay, but it looks actually yeah. This is a little uh, larger. You can see it very. It's it's pretty uh, obvious, eh? Like so. Now, uh, so what you can do is you can go ahead and uh, do the uh, intubation. So, say for example, we are putting in the king's uh, vision, right? So there's a switch on, right? Okay. So whenever we introduce, we have to ensure that we don't uh, damage any of the soft tissues, especially the teeth and the, you know, the lip. Okay, because it's highly likely that you look at this and only once you go in, you don't know what is happening proximal to the camera. Okay, so whatever is happening proximal to the camera is something which we need to look at. And then you, this one is introduced, the channel one is introduced along the midline. Okay, so it is very important that we see the posterior one third of the tongue. Okay, again, it is highly likely that we might cross the epiglottis and go inside. This can result in a false cord, like that is the false glottis. That is by pushing, pulling in that esophageal opening, it might look like a glottic opening. So there is a likelihood of uh, the esophageal intubation. So once you see the posterior one third of the tongue, you can slowly progress and then enter into the valicular. Yeah. And then once you give it, you can see the uh, pressure. So here we use a channel. Okay, so this tube goes through the channel. Okay, you can give some pressure as you see. This, yeah, right. It goes in, right. It goes in, yeah. So this is the channeled ones. Okay, so this is the channeled one. Now, uh, yeah, this king is the channel one, right? You have other McGrath also, yeah? Uh, no, we have to, no, there won't be any space. So, and the visualization is such that the glottic opening has to be in the middle. Only then this will enter uh, into it. So, in, uh, we'll come to the... Me uh, everyone, like you, you can see that in, the, in this uh, part as well. So, this is the Macintosh the CMAC uh, part. So here, the difference is like we go along the right side of the tongue just like our normal scopy. Everything is like the normal scopy. Yeah. So we go here, lateralize the tongue. So here again, we visualize the posterior uh, one third of the tongue to ensure that we don't lift the, lift the epiglottis. So uh, this has been uh, made such that it's a difficult uh, visualization. So they have filled some area. Okay. So here you can use. So once the visualization is there, Okay, so you can pass it just like our normal part. Okay, and then once you reach here, you, if it is not going, then you can do something like a screwing movement so that it can go in, right? So this is the one. So this, this is what I was saying. See, he could, even uh, without me telling what is required, uh, any experienced help can quickly know what is to be done. So if you're working as a team, uh, you know, it is easy for you to train the people are with you, the technicians or the expert help, which whoever is there to quickly train you into what is required when an intubation is there, right? Okay, so I think uh, you can go ahead with the hands-on. Three of you can try it here and three of you can go here. Are these plates different? Yeah, different sizes are available, different sizes are available, right? So I think the, this is a four size. Okay, so you have a three and the four size here. And this is one of the uh, newer modifications. You can just attach it to the yeah, that's okay. So this one, unlike the kings, you can see that you can, uh, like when you enter it, you can keep it like this. Once you go in, you can, uh, so this is the advantage. Of this. So 360, so these are the minor variations you will find from one video laryngoscope to the other, right? So uh, three of you there, three of you here and you can. It is it, it is same with the C Mac as well. Like any like any Macintosh blade, insertion becomes uh, difficult with the uh, Macintosh type uh, blades. Okay, angulated ones are easier. Angulated ones are uh, easier in that case. Right? Yeah, ramp uh, position or what you can do is uh, instead of uh, introducing it uh, like this, like you know, push the tongue from here. Like. Here you don't have the... Uh, so once you go in, then you bring it back to the center. 
then again you get a good wish right so uh, here you it, it doesn't interfere in your scope the like you know instead of instead of introducing it like this when you are going to hit something here you introduce it in the lateral part only when you go in you go here so you can see that this was the place where it is supposed to be now it doesn't hit so after you go partially inside uh, you can uh, come in all right sure okay you can try now huh? you can even change it to this uh, screen you want to you want to do it with this or with the screen this you must have done already yeah so yeah uh cheapest is uh, i think uh, the kings might be the cheapest actually which is available